Hello everyone, we are Apocrypha World, and this is Apocrypha Zera. Alright, we are back and leveled up, which is awesome. Alright, now, who's taking first watch? Uh, Astrid is taking first watch. Okay, alright, alright. Um, so, are you guys just gonna, like, fall over into the cots? Oh yeah, I'm. I just got done hallucinating. I'm. I need to. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah. Just got out of my miniature coma. I gotta take a nap. Uh, yeah. Um. Why don't you go ahead then? As they settle in, the crackling of the fire is there. Um. And the only thing that you're left with basically is the quiet. And just like the the kind of sounds that you can kind of hear from like the the forest area. Can I can I be cleaning my weapons, like cleaning, cleaning yeah. like wiping off my guns and wiping off the hatchet and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm doing a full clean of all my of all my weapons and just make like doing a a, a twice over of all my gear, like an inventory. Okay. Okay. Um, and yeah, you're you're doing that for uh, a decent little bit of time. Uh, go ahead and give me a repair construct roll really fast, under knowledge. That's a, a four. four. Okay, so you're going at it, but you are very very tired, like to the point where you're having a hard time focusing. You're not really, you're not really. Um, I guess really getting to what you need to, but uh, go ahead and give me a uh, a status of effect resistance roll now. That would be a sixteen. Unfortunately, not, because your first roll I up the uh, challenge level a little bit, um, because that's I was determining how tired you were based on that. Uh, no, you, you're trying to stay awake, but just the, the droning sounds from the forest and the crackling of the fire and the sound of the waves behind you, your eyes just slowly shut. You all have the strange dream. There's storms all around you like you're in a cloud and lightning striking and you feel very anxious you you feel like you're stuck in like a metal tube within a storm is the best way i can describe like what it sounds like what it feels like you feel a lot of anxiety and in your head you hear when i was young I dream of being a stranger in a strange land. I wanted more than anything else to live in another world, to have the power to make a difference. I am powerful, lost and alone. And with that, you all wake up. And it is, it is bright again outside. I feel like I was supposed to get up at some point. Uh, Astrid, you were supposed to wake me up. I drifted off. I drifted off myself. Okay, I'd like to uh, look around the campsite and see if there's any footprints or any indication that somebody may have been at the camp. I'll do the same. Uh, yeah. Give me a uh, search. It's an eight. Yeah, I might as well search too. <laughs> That's a twelve for me. Uh, it's an eighteen. Okay, yeah. Um, you guys, you don't see any any tracks uh, around the the camp. I will say that you uh, can kind of. Uh, distinguish which direction uh, 
Ukaliev must have ran off, but other than that, like, you can only track it for a little bit, and then it's gone. Okay. Guys, uh, Ukaliev never came back. Well, she was headed this way, apparently. She told us to complete the mission. Should we go and find her, or should we do it? We'll, we'll make for the villa, but we'll see if we can pick up her trail along the way. At least see where she went to. I agree. I'm right. guessing the trail leads that way. You said I picked up the trail. What direction was she headed in? Uh, she was actually headed in the other, in the other kind of direction. Over uh, towards the ruins. More towards the ruins, yeah. Let's go to the villa, and then we'll check back up on her. All right. Let's try to make this quick. Everyone get your things. Let's go. <clears throat> Be on your guard. Can I, uh, before we go, can I search any around a camp for any other weapons? I mean, you kind of already searched, but... Okay, fair enough. All right. Be on your best guard. We don't... I don't know what the hell those things were last night and I might be right that they only come out at night but just be careful especially you Castellas <sighs> oh yeah the, with that with one messing with my heart I'm not gonna not gonna let that happen again no thank you all right uh, make our way back towards the villa going through the woods uh yeah so as you're making your way through Kind of retracing your steps. Oh, yep. Uh, I was going to see as we were walking through about that. Uh, we heard it in the temple about a uh, blue and green path in the woods somewhere nearby. Oh, okay. I was going to see if that was anywhere near uh, as we go make our way to the villa. Uh, I mean, you don't see any really other paths. Okay. Uh, at least not in the, like direction that you're uh, kind of going. Okay. So. Did anybody else have a strange dream last night? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Yeah, how were, how were you there? I had one too. Like I was alone and anxious. Alright. Stuck in a metal tube. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's, that's what it felt like to me, anyway. It, it went so fast, and I, I heard a voice saying something, but I can't quite remember. Yeah. All right. Well. Let's just keep going. Yeah. Just don't worry about it for now. Uh, yeah. So, it, it's fairly uneventful. I would say you're probably anxious going through here, but yes. no, it's, uh... It's pretty uneventful. You remember you pass back through the uh, the old base camp there that you all searched through. All those tents still pretty much the way they were before. Um, and yeah, let's get this open. So, once again, you approach <clears throat> this one-time villa. Uh, and all that remains are the four pillars, standing around four stories tall each, with scattered broken walls. The villa is incredibly old-looking, with broken grain brick foundation, shattered glass, and vines overtaking large portions of its visage. It seems devoid of life and lost to time. The only exception is a small, overgrown workstation located in the middle of the courtyard, which was obviously set up by one of the science teams quite a while ago. Which you guys explored before. Yeah. I remember we... Didn't we find a path that led to a cavern underneath the villa? And we have a map. Yeah. I gave you the map. Yeah. Alright. So we're gonna head straight for that. I mean, why not? We need to be careful, though. Because... If we are to exit this <laughs> cave... And it's nighttime, We might as well just stay in the cave. <laughs> We'll make it quick this time. Uh, I will also say that you remembered you'd already checked the pillars, and <clears throat> three out of the four have, like, completely dilapidated within. 
though the uh, the fourth one seems to have uh, its ground floor somewhat intact, though the interior dark with small gray, uh, small rays of light uh, intruding upon its innards from the cracks in its walls looks very unstable. So just kind of keep that in mind while going through there. Is this the entrance to the cave? Well, it's the entrance to like the the villa itself it's the only place that isn't like caved in gotcha Castalis, with your dark vision can you see anything out of the ordinary i mean i can i can try and see what i can see but i mean if we want to get through this wall here i do have explosives it'll cave in if we use explosives Uh, I mean, I... there's a doorway there. Well, yeah, you said it's blocked, though. Right? No, no, no. The other ones are. This is the only one that's, like, open. And not dilapidated in on itself. Alright. Damn, I was gonna use explosives. <laughs> Honestly, I'll just follow his lead. Okay, yeah, so you're... Astrid, you can go on. I, I turn on... Oh, I have that uh, lantern with me still. The Galvanium yeah. lantern. And I proceed to walk inside with Serge following with the yeah. lantern in hand as well. Uh, Yeah, so as you enter... The bricks seem to churn and shift as you enter. You're in a hallway. Several doorways can be seen both to the right and to the left. Uh, many large wooden pillars seem to have been like put up and are keeping shit like from falling in. Kind of like a... Uh, <clears throat> you might see them like a shaft or something. But like, yeah, that's so it seems like these are the things that's really holding this foundation up at this point uh so what would you like to what would you like to do what do you think fellas well it's either right or left don't don't look at me the last time I did something I got my heart fucked with alright let's go. go right no yeah. All right. So door number one or door number two on the right? Door number one. All right. So Check for inside... <laughs> okay, what Okay, what are we doing? Nothing. Okay. Go ahead. As you walk in, inside the room uh, is what may have once been tables of stone that have cracked and broken down, cluttered stone and metal litter the floor. Um... And as you're kind of looking around, uh, would you like to give me a search roll? Yes. It's a 13. 17. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's say. Uh, 3. That's a 13 for me. Alright. Uh, well, both. Serge and Astrid notice that, like, near the end of this room, you see uh, what seems to be like a little bit of a glint, like a silvery glint underneath some, uh, like, light rubble. I'll, I'll go and inspect it and push the rubble out of the way. I follow behind with my, uh, with my lantern clip to my belt so I have my rifle out. So as you, you move the debris about uh, a little bit, you find that the silver is actually a handle to what was once a small like door on the ground. Like a trap door. Though now it's mostly broken apart, you can see a stairwell leading to the darkness below. Uh -huh. Serge, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Depends. Are you thinking about going down there? Yeah. 
Because I'm not. <laughs> well, I sure as hell am. I'm following Kostalas. Do we want to check out the other room before we went down here? That's a good idea. Just in case there's no way back up. Ah, fine. Let's go back out and check door number two real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as you walk out, you go into uh, door number two on the right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is a room very similar to the one that you were just in. Dusty, cracked, broken. It looks almost like it could be like a kitchen area, though. But everything is so old and ruined that... Can we still do another circle? Yeah. Yeah. 15 this time. That's a 20. Unnatural. Uh, yeah, so, uh, no, there's, sorry guys, there's really nothing in here that you're able to find. Well, let's go back and check that trap door then. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. You make your way through, the, the, the whole foundation is churning more now that you're walking through it, but you do make your way back to the trap door. As you travel down the stone steps, the temperature gradually gets cooler as the darkness envelops you. So, um, do you want to use your light? I'm guessing you're still using your light. You have dark vision. You're I've got the lantern. So, I've, got, yeah. I've got my lantern still clipped to my belt, rifle no, ready. That's good. Uh, as you're walking down, you observe many detailed carvings of patterns uh, upon the walls. Um, and I, uh, I actually want you guys to roll me a um, a lore history really fast. That would be a nine. And I got zero. Uh, okay, then. No, unfortunately. Um, so, but yeah, you just see the, the detailed carvings. Now, I want you to also give me, as you all are continuing going down and it's getting kind of colder and colder and colder... Give me an obscure check really fast. That one. Uh, let's say 14. Let's see, 15. 15, okay. So for you two, um, <laughs> uh, Costalis and Astrid. The further you descend, the stranger you feel. Is the oxygen getting thinner, or are you simply on edge? You simultaneously feel lighter than before, but with a heavy weight upon your shoulders. You feel like your whole body has a vibration going through it, like tiny electrical pulses and all of these feelings quickly wash over you before disappearing completely. It's no longer as cold as it was either for any of you. It's kind of warmed back up too. Both of you, um, you know your big stats? Pick one to add an extra point to. Yeah, for so uh, any any of our big stats. Yep, physical charm, swift knowledge, awareness, or magic. Go ahead and pick one. And you can add a plus one to the main. <laughs> but do yeah, we know what um, this was? This feeling, or is it just a, remains a mystery? Uh, I mean, you don't you don't know what it was. You you have no idea. The stair. Uh, as the stairwell reaches its base, opening up to a huge cavern, 
what looks to be a large glowing mass of plants and mushrooms fills the middle of this large cavern, seeming to surround uh, the even larger root system of an unknown plant somewhere above. So basically a large root system from somewhere above the cavern kind of twists down into it. And where it touches the base of the cavern, all kinds of like bioluminescent mushrooms and plants are like growing up out of it. Uh, which kind of like gives off a bunch of different colors. Uh, it's kind of, I don't know. It's beautiful in here, but slightly unsettling. Yeah. <laughs> The ground surrounding these plants has changed to a frigid blue color, and a rhythmic vibration can be felt throughout, like the cavern itself is alive with a heartbeat or breathing. You kind of feel a warmth wash over you. I think there's more to here than meets the eye. Yeah, maybe. Can we do another search room? Uh, actually, as you all are taking this all in, I once again want you to roll me an obscure. Uh, that is a 16. 19 for me. 7. Okay. So you, Astrid, to the right of this root system, you see an ebony obelisk covered in red patterns, but you can't make out much at this distance. But you feel like you really, really, really have to go check this thing out. Like it's pulling on your mind. Beckoning you. For... Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, for you, Castalis, to, right, uh, to the left is a massive mound of what seems to be bones. And a voice in your ear whispers, telling you, feel yourself like you can't resist this pull. And um, as far as you, Serge, uh -huh. you feel like you have to approach this root system in the middle. For some reason, the warmth is so inviting to you. All right. All right. Does anybody else feel a strange pulling sensation to them? You say this, neither of them are responding to you. They are walking slowly. Uh, Serge towards the root system. Costal is towards this big, weird mound of bones. I think the... Can I grab them? Um, you're going to have to give me... Uh, another obscure, because you're the only one that even got close to the the number that you needed. <laughs> That'd be a twenty-one. Uh, okay, yeah. So you're you're able to kind of shake it a little bit. So which one are you trying to grab? Oh, I can't grab. Them. I can't grab both of them. Uh, you're well. You're not close enough to both of them anymore. They've kind of started walking while you were walking. Which one's walking towards the bones? Uh, that would be Costalis, but I've... he's the furthest away from you too. So he's he hasn't been the one hurt the most. I'm back. I'm good. I healed. Yeah, you can do whatever. I was just describing the scene. Yeah, good, I grab good. Serge and kind of shake him out of it. Uh, as you grab onto him, he does not stop moving. Then I throw him to the ground. Uh, yeah, okay. 
Uh, he he gets up and continues walking. Oh, I meant like throw him to the ground and holding him. Um, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm noticing. You you are holding him down now, uh, Costales. You are getting closer to those bones, but you are you are holding him down. Yes, I have fifty feet of rope. Could I like, and you can. The, so, that that would be a... Well, first off, I need you to give me uh, another obscure roll, and then if you pass that... Uh, yeah. If you pass that, it would be like a grapple. I don't think I will. It's a 10. Uh, no. You just... You hear like a ringing noise in your ears. Okay. Um, uh, but that's where you are. You. Okay. So as this is all happening, you actually make your way to the bones. As you approach, you see a huge pile of bones long since picked clean, which are sitting in front of you. And as you approach them and you get right on top of them, you begin to hear a noise so low that you almost think it might be your like imagination but you don't know why you're walking up to these as you get closer you begin to make out hushed voices the closer to the pile you get you begin to hear the sounds of steel screeching uh the echoes of crying the sound of uh like steel clashing with steel and cheering and you can hear screams like all this just cacophony of noises in your ears when you reach the foot of the pile, you notice black and red feathers falling all around you, and something red glinting within the pile of bones. Do you want to grab it? Yeah. Okay, then there won't be a roll. Uh, you grab the red orb and pull it from the pile of bones. It feels slightly squishy, like a ball that has lost a bit of air. Uh, The color uh, swirls within. As you gaze into it, you hear another voice, distinctly different, somewhat panicked, yell, Enzo! Look at! And cut off. The ball explodes, and you feel a searing pain. Uh, Which which arm did you pick this thing up with? I meant to ask you that before. Like, are you right-handed or left-handed? Yeah, I mean, I'm right-handed. So. Uh, yeah, so you feel a searing pain run up your uh, right arm from the tips of your fingers all the way up to your neck and eye. Give me a status effect resistance. And... It is a 14. You feel an excruciating amount of pain in your arm, up through your shoulder and into your eye. You see black dots. And as you blink through them, you see what looks to be the inside of an old prison cell. And as you continue blinking through the tears, the scene returns to the cave surrounding you and you're staring at these bones. Uh, You take three points of damage. And as these black dots kind of threaten again, and you feel incredibly hungry all of the sudden, you hear a simple phrase that says, All in this world belongs to me. And then you're just, you're back. Now, as that's happening, you too. Once more, Sarah, give me one more uh, obscure roll, and we're going to see what happens here. It's a 17. Uh, yeah, okay. So, as you come to, you're on the ground, uh, and you see Astrid, who is now rapidly approaching this, this obelisk. But you still kind of feel like you want to ch- like look at 
those roots up close. I thought I had it's him. It's not forcing you. I thought I had him taken down. Yeah, he was on the ground, and then you rolled a shitty, obscure roll. Crap. And then... But you did stop him. Can I, uh... Can I try to trip him up with my leech seed arm real quick? He is further than 10 feet away from uh, you. Bummer. Okay. Uh, but you said I'm still compelled to go look at the uh, the mushrooms, the roots. You are. Like, uh, it's not forcing you, but you feel like you really want to. Okay. Uh, but first, that's all I can give you. First off, I'm going to be like, Astrid, Astrid, where are you going? You don't hear anything. And where's Costalis? What do I see with him? Uh, he is actually just kind of standing, like, stationary in front of those bones. Oh, yeah, like, Costales. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go check out the roots, then. Okay. Very cool, very cool. Um, so, as you approach that, we are going to go over here to Astrid. You approach an, ebol- an ebony obelisk covered in dark red runic engravings. Uh, and the obelisk itself is lying on its side. It looks to be kind of broken and somewhat crumbling. As you approach, you feel a slight vibration emanating from it like a pulse. Uh, and as you kind of come to, right, back to your senses, you're standing about 10 feet away from it. So you you kind of like feel yourself touching the obelisk now. Uh, and those are the pulsations that you're feeling. And... The, the way it feels reminds you of, like, flesh almost, which is very off-putting. Uh, and it feels kind of like a, a heartbeat. What are you going to do? Can I just take my hand off of it? Yes. I take my hand off of it immediately. Yeah, as you, uh, as you pull your hand off... You see, like, everything changes. You see a large interior room full of machinery. Uh, You don't recognize it, but the person whose eyes you're seeing it through does. It's almost like you're inside somebody else's head as a guest. So, what are you going to do, though? This is where you are now. I guess check around the room that I'm in. Uh, yeah. If you look to your left, over the railing is a figure that looks strikingly similar to the monstrosity that destroyed Zuthahan. Uh, though it only seems to be half-assembled with large tubes hooked into it. Uh, mind you, it does look different than that one, but it looks similar in the sense that it's fucking huge and kind of similarly built. Um, And to your right, there are many other workers dressed in strange outfits covering their entire bodies. Though they seem strange and bulky to you, uh, the person you're seeing through the eyes of recognizes them as, like, hazardous environment suits. So. Um, And above you are long tubes filled with a blue liquid descending to the left uh, below the platform, hooking into the machinery. the, The big monstrosity thing I guess I go check out where the uh, I'll, I'll go to step closer to the monstrosity thing to check out what it looks like uh, okay yeah as you uh, as you lean in it um, it almost looks like a, like a statue I guess you could say Uh, Though it is missing its left arm, and it seems like it's still being assembled. So. 
Uh, and as you're checking that out, suddenly sirens begin blaring, and you can feel the ground shake. A loud voice booms out of the ceiling in a language you've never heard before, but somehow understand. Your host gets a sinking feeling in their gut. They know that something is very wrong. The voice announces, Dizel Kine must be activated now. You know it's too early, but you have no choice. You take control, looking back down at the thing now being quickly uh, assembled as you hear several more explosions. Uh, and as you come to, you are holding what looks to be a uh, obsidian-like heart. Like it's shaped like an anatomical heart. Uh, it also has red uh, engravings on it. Uh, and it's about the size of a heart. And you're just kind of holding on to it. Uh, and it's in your hand that you've, like, pulled back from it. I wonder to myself, what in the hell did I just see? Did oh, I... not only that. Uh, do you know where your, like, R tattoo is? Hmm. On you? Do you know, like, on your body where did you ever decide? Uh, kind of on the underside of my forearm. All right. You feel a burning sensation as... So essentially what I'm going to have you do is come up with a kind of tattoo that comes out from that in multiple segments. And one of those segments is now going to be filled in and it's going to be red. Uh, and you can decide the design of that. We'll go over that at a later time. Uh, but, you know, it feels like it's burning and then it's over. But yeah, now you've got this uh, this obsidian heart. I put this the obsidian heart in my satchel. Okay. And Hell yeah. walk towards uh walk towards Castalis. All right. Um and let's see. For you you approach the mass of uh Serge. You uh you approach the mass of plants in the center. And as you do, you feel something tugging at you, you know, still beckoning you to approach. You see something resembling a person wrapped up within the roots in the center, and a mask hangs from its head, though both are obscured by the overgrowth. The person seems to be wearing a robe of some kind. What would you like to do? Uh, I'd like to try to see if I can get that mask. You can. As you touch the mask... You feel yourself become weightless as everything goes black. You can only see a single tiny light ahead of you. You begin to hear the sounds of screaming and explosions as sight returns to you. You're in the middle of a field filled with large craters and deep fissures. Huge rectangular metal boxes resembling uh, separate freely moving train cars loudly move by you. A deafening cracking sound followed by fire erupts from the long tubes atop it. It seems to be some kind of mobile cannon. Above you is a man flying with wings of black and red feathers, spewing golden chains down upon those that fire upwards at him. For only a moment, he locks eyes with you, and a single word is, uh, a single word is spoken, or a single phrase is spoken. Shaveo, get up. Raha is not done. You come to, holding this half-broken mask, staring at a headless skeletal remains of a body, with roots jutting through it, a brilliant blue stalk coming from where the neck would be, blooming out into a large flower. And you have obtained a strange fractured mask. All right. And uh, did you want to do anything, by the way? Going all the way back around to you. Because everybody's kind of, like, had their moments now. Uh, after your arm and everything happened. I mean, I was... Was I still, like, kind of not in control? Of my you're you're in control now. Okay. Yeah, you're. everybody is basically coming to at the same time. Uh, can I make an insight check to try to see what's taking over us I mean sure uh, that 
that's a two. Uh, no. no. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not do anything else then. Okay, you didn't want to, like... No, okay. That's fine. Um. Yeah. Uh, so, as you are all coming to, the, uh, the pile of bones at your feet begins to quake as they start to move and form into some kind of a creature. First, its head begins to form, and then its shoulders and its arms down. What are you doing as this thing is forming in front of you? No, I'm getting the fuck away from me. Ah! Ah! Yeah, okay, as you fly back, you all see this now, because it's kind of loud. Uh, as its torso begins to form, it starts to pull itself in, like, into your direction. Upon one of the skulls is part of a mask that seems affixed. Um, but yeah, so this creature, as it's pulling itself together, is comprised of many bones forming itself into what looks to be a humanoid form uh, with a crown of bones upon its head, uh, which the head and shoulders consist of humanoid skulls all held together, and the rest of the body is formed from many miscellaneous bones. So, as it's forming, are you going to let it continue forming? How are, how are you all approaching this? Uh, as it is... Uh forming, and while I'm relatively close to it, uh, I'd like to use uh, was it pinning shot to see if I can hit the head where the mask is. Also, is he in line of fire if I try to shoot it with a pistol? Uh, I mean, it depends on how, like, if this thing's still on the ground, yeah. Oh, you said it's forming, though, right? It is forming, yes. Which means it's still like kind it's of still pulling on the ground. itself. Okay. So yeah, he would kind of be in the line. I mean, okay. you can, you can kind of try to move a little bit. It's not as if like you're in one direct line. It is right. Yeah, yeah. So I was gonna use my uh, my quick draw ability. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'll let you use your turn basically to do like move over and then do that. Okay. Um. All right. And what are you? Like I said, I want to use pinning shot. All right. Well, what exactly does that do? Because I just don't have it in front of me right now, and I don't remember the like two hundred things that I made. Use a bow, uh, uh, pinning my pin enemy in place for a number of turns equal to my split score. Uh, the enemy must pass a um, CL equal to the bowman's swift score to remove the arrow before the effect ends. Uh, okay, yeah. Well, uh, you could try to pin this thing, but that wouldn't really be used for hitting a mask off of something. That's more along the lines that you're pinning somebody in place. If that makes any sense. Uh, so if I hit the head, would it be pinned by the head to the ground? So, um... You know what? Yeah, I would allow that since it's still forming. J mainly because this thing is humongous once it actually forms. But if you're shooting it while it's still on the ground, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Roll a seven for my shot. Seven? Okay. Oh, are you fucking serious? You good? Uh, yeah. Actually, no excuse me. And uh, how many stamina does a pinning shot take? It's one. Okay. We'll go ahead and remove that, but yeah, if you didn't... That's an 11 total. An 11. And... Uh, yeah, did you want to do anything? For wrong? me, I... I step back a little, a little ways in order for it to form just a little bit more so that I can point... Uh, I will say that you are the furthest person away from it, so you're probably fine where you are. Okay. Uh, I point my rifle ready for a, a quick shot right to the mask so that I can try to try to shatter the, the skull piece without breaking the mask. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Give me that. 
all, still pulling itself together. Yeah, because yeah, you guys I, have a little bit of time. I have. Fully formed. Uh, I have dead eye, which doesn't take anything. So. Oh yeah, yeah. That's just uh, advantage. So you get to roll a d20 and a d10, and then add whatever you've got to it. That is a 21. Um, yeah, you actually do. You break straight through that, and this the little part of a mask like tumbles down uh, and hits the ground Like as this thing's starting to push itself up, uh, and its legs are starting to begin to form. Now, you all have a one more turn before this thing is fully formed. So what, what are you going to do? Serge, grab it. Gra- grab so it. That's mask. still too close, isn't it? Can I use my arm? To grab the piece of mask, the leech seed arm. Uh, on it. I mean, you're still more than ten feet away from this thing. Okay, well, never mind. I'll yeah, wait. Till sorry. We... Uh, well, I'll go. I guess I'll do another uh, just to show it. Also, what is the uh, damage on that rifle? Uh, the... the rifle is one two. One to two dam. Uh, no. I'm sorry. It's three to four damage. Okay, roll a d4. Three. So, okay, three damage. Three damage it is. Okay. Uh, sorry. What are you guys doing? Did my last shot land? I rolled an 11. No. Uh, no. Okay. I'm gonna do another shot. All right. That's a 12. 14. Uh, yeah. You get it that time. Okay. It's just a 1 damage. Uh, okay. Um, uh, alright. What about you, Kristalis? Um, I guess I'll try another one of those pinning shots there. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, I assume you're trying to pin maybe one of its hands down now that it's yeah. pushing itself up. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, that's, that's gonna hit. Um, so how many turns is that? Uh, it is my swift modifiers at one turn. Do off that again? One? Uh, yeah, just my regular bows, one. One? Uh, okay, well, unfortunately, it does unpin itself. But it took one damage, so that's something. Um, and then you have your one turn left. And then this thing is going to be fully formed. I'm going to use one of my Infernium rounds. Okay. Uh, and shoot it directly in the head again. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Give me that. That is a 28. Okay, yeah. Uh, so what was the... Uh, you got your damage for that is That's three, to, three four. to four plus twelve. Because of the Infernium room. Okay, yeah. So roll me the D four. That would be a fifteen damage. Um okay, yeah. No, you um you just shoot this thing and it just explodes on impact. Before it can even form itself up, it just starts, like, it just kind of falls over and the bones just scatter. Nice shot, Astrid. Nice shot. Yeah, so enemies in this, uh, most of them are kind of unique, and so they all have unique weaknesses and shit. Uh, So this one was uh, magic, and magic object attacks do three times damage, so you, you just smeared that fucking thing. Nice. Serge, is did I see a piece of a mask in your hand earlier? Uh, I have uh, most of a mask. It, it is fractured. most of a mask. It has little um, a sapphire in the middle of it that's fairly cracked, and the mask itself is cracked, but like it's still intact. So there's no pieces missing from no, it. No, no, no. Okay, I thought the 
I thought the the mask piece that the monster had was a piece of the same mask. Um, well, why don't you go check the mask piece out? I go with Serge to check it out. I'll go, yeah. <laughs> Voluntelling, that's great. Yeah, yeah. And I guess you're just standing there staring at it as they approach. Yeah, just kind of right. taking it in. It's like, hmm, let's see what these guys do with this. Um, okay, yeah. So, what do you want to do as you approach it? Um, I'd like to pick up the piece of the mask. All right, and it is, um, yeah, so it has a, um, yeah, okay, so you see what looks to be, like, the right portion of a mask, encompass, uh, encompass, uh, oh my god, encompassing, encompassing, thank you, the left, or the, the right eye and right portion of the nose, uh, an upper, like, jaw part. Uh, the mask itself is black, uh, with designs kind of resembling the runes that you saw on the obelisk and carved into the walls. Uh, the upper teeth are jagged and sharp, and the eye glints a ruby red. I've never seen anything like it before. Me neither, but these runes kind of look familiar. And I grab the obsidian heart and compare it to... The writings on the mask. The, the runes on the mask. Uh, they are similar. Though, uh, if, if anybody wants to give me maybe a, uh, lore a lore history... Yeah, I mean, you're not really... It seems important, though. I'll pocket this for now. I'll take it with us. Okay, yeah. Um, and... As you guys are kind of just... There, afterwards, I want you all to give me a, a search... Serge and Astrid both notice at the same time that Costalis's uh, right hand, his fingertips are this like bright ruby red and ended in points. Um, Costalis, what what happened to your your arm there? Ah, what are you uh, what are you talking about? Oh my god! Is this, is this something you do like seasonally? Is this um, Is it molting season for you? Pretty sure I've hit puberty already, so... Well, whatever's going on, I don't think we need to be here any longer. Does it hurt? I don't know. Why don't you come close and let's see. I meant hurt you physically. Does it sting? Does it ache? Well, I didn't notice it until you all pointed it out, so... Well, except for the thing exploding and causing you immense pain that gave you three points of damage up your right arm. Well, but other I, than that, you were fine. I imagine you all had strange visions as well. I did, and I... I saw... A, a creature similar to what we saw... Before we died. The like one the, that terrorized the city. Oh, the giant... The giant, uh, mechanized... Yeah. It was in a... Pl- it was in a factory, and they were building one, and the the eyes that I, that I cascaded were, I heard 
that it needed to be turned on now. And that's what I saw. I had a strange vision, almost one of that, that train back at the, uh, the museum, the exhibit. It's almost like a war zone, but there was some sort of bird man creature. And we made eye contact and he'd said something to me, but I can I don't understand any of it. But this mask, something about it, 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 it echoes from, from some other land. It's familiar, but strange. Either way, I don't think we need to be here any longer. Let's get out of here. I agree. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, ascending back up through the the stairs. They got you there. You can uh, you see the the carvings again up the walls. But other than that, it's it's fairly uneventful. Did you want to do anything else, or do you just want to get the fuck out of the villa? Well, we gotta go down the left hallway. We haven't checked it yet. Let's go outside and check what time it is in the day. First. Oh, that'll, that'll be a good... good sh- checking point. Uh, yeah. So you make your way outside. The walls and ceiling creak even more. Uh, as you make your way out, and uh, it seems like the the sun is like hovering right in the middle of the sky. It is it is midday now. A lot of time has passed, actually, like an absurd amount of time for the little bit of time that you feel like you were in there. Like uh, you feel like you were only in there for like maybe thirty minutes, but hours have passed. Seems like we're in there a little bit longer than we should have been. I don't know if we should go down the left hallway, because it'll be sundown by the time we get out. You're right. I don't want to be stuck out here in the middle of the night again. I say we head back to camp. Or... uh, Actually, I just think we should head back to camp and maybe see where... Okay, live? Yeah, where she went. We'll backtrack to the camp and we'll regroup there. Let's go. All right, as you as you make your way back, you all feel just kind of off, off put by everything that's happened to you today. Uh, everybody's been having strange visions, weird experiences, being hurt somehow. Um. But all, you know, leaving with some new items as well. Uh, unless you wanted to do anything, the, the walk back is fairly uneventful. Um, no. It is it is almost serene if you weren't so off-put by everything that's right, been happening. Yeah. Anxiety through the roof. Is Castalis' arm still the same? Like- yeah, when you look at it, yeah, it's, it's his fingertips from about here down are like ruby red uh, and they end in like points now all of them looks like that's a new weapon for you Uh, I could use it for something um alright and just uh just to have make sure everything is either in your inventory or on your person thing just described you the uh, the mask that you have, right? Mm-hmm. The uh, the the mostly intact one, not the one that's like a the, the right piece. Mask. Yeah, um, just go ahead and mark that down as a uh, strange, uh, strange jeweled mask. Okay. You, um. Costalis, I actually want you to mark this down as the aspect of gluttony for what you've got. And then you have the uh, obelisk heart uh, and tattoo segment. 
Um, but yeah, and uh, as you make it back to camp, we are going to end it there. So, yeah, what are we? Huh? Hmm? All right, everyone, let's we'll regroup and uh, we'll see you all in the next session. I'll get the fire started. <laughs> Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it to this point. We all really appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed this session, and uh, we've only got more good shit to come from here. So, uh, bye! Bye!